Donald Trump is trailing a few points behind Kamala Harris, according to the most recent national polls. 538 has Harris ahead by plus 3.2, while DDHQ has her ahead plus 4.1. But Polly Market gives Trump the edge with a 50% chance of winning the election. In this video, we are going to be filling out a highly contested 2024 electoral map based on the most recent polling averages in all 50 states. There's a lot of new and shocking data to cover here, so we're just going to get right into it. Starting off with both candidates' safe states. Most, if not all, of these states don't have any polling averages, and some don't even have polls with Harris yet. So we are going to be basing it off of their 2020 margins. For Trump, he is sure to win Alaska, Idaho, Utah, Wyoming, Montana, North Dakota, South Dakota, most of Nebraska, Kansas, Oklahoma, Missouri, Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, South Carolina, Tennessee, Kentucky, Indiana, and West Virginia. Out of these states, only two got below our safe margin in 2020. Those states were Alaska and South Carolina, but both of these have shown huge support for Trump this cycle, and I highly doubt either will get very close. We can also add a pair of Midwestern states that have been good bets for Trump in both of his past elections. These states are Ohio and Iowa, which voted for the former president by margins of at least eight points or more in both 2016 and 2020. And even though they don't have a polling average as of right now, their most recent polls heavily favor Republicans. In Ohio, the most recent independent poll shows Trump beating Harris by a margin of 12 points with 56% to 44%. And in Iowa, the most recent poll from Signal gives Trump a winning margin of 12 points with 51% to 39%. Because of this, we can make both solid red. Remember that margins for our map today are 1 to 3% tilt, 3 to 7% lean, 7 to 12% likely, and then anything greater than 12 percentage points or more is considered safe and are our deepest shades of red and blue. For Harris, she is guaranteed the state of Hawaii, Washington, California, Illinois, Maine's first congressional district, Vermont, New Hampshire, Rhode Island, Connecticut, New York, Delaware, Maryland, and the District of Columbia. There are a few states like Washington and New York that were much closer earlier this cycle, specifically before Biden dropped out. But the most recent polls in these states suggest that she's brought these back and made them even harder for Trump to try and flip. Adding up both Trump's and Harris's safe states gives Harris a slight initial lead. Moving on to the likely states this election. These are the states that are just a little bit closer than the safe states and are still considered good bets for their respective candidates, even if they don't end up doing much campaigning. Starting off Trump's likely states is the Lone Star State of Texas, which, fun fact, represents the second most amount of electoral votes from any singular state with 40 only behind California. Over the last few election cycles, many Republicans feared this historically red state would flip, dramatically changing the balance of power between the two major parties. We can see this trend just looking back to both of Trump's elections, where he won by a margin of nine points in 2016, but only by 5.6 points in 2020. This cycle, however, Trump seems to have changed this since he's been leading by some pretty big margins almost the entire time. Even though there isn't a polling average here as of the making of this video, the most recent poll between Trump and Harris gives the former president a winning margin of plus nine with 55% to 46%. Because of this, we can make Texas a likely Trump state. Adding Texas alone is enough to put Trump back into the lead, but that's not his only likely vote. I'm also going to add the state of Florida to his list of likely states. Overall this cycle, it has trended pretty far to the right, especially when we look at how it's voted over the past 20 years or so. The most recent average gives Trump a still impressive lead of plus 4.6, which I think is much lower than what it'll actually end up being. So instead of making it a lean Trump state, I'll make it a likely one. Also in his corner is Maine's second congressional district. There isn't a polling average here yet, but it voted for Trump in 2020 by a margin of plus 7.4. And on top of that, most polls here this cycle have given him some huge leads, like plus 20. The most recent poll shows Harris ahead plus five, but based on all the numbers this cycle, I think that it'll end up being around what it was in the last election so we can make it likely Trump. Now, before we see if Harris is able to catch up with her likely states, please consider joining the 5.7% and subscribe. Moving on to Harris's likely states, 
We have Colorado and New Mexico. These states have been at least some shade of blue since Obama's first campaign in 2008. And with most polls from this cycle, specifically the most recent ones, I'd be surprised to see that change anytime soon. Colorado has neither a polling average nor any polls with Harris as of right now, but the most recent poll with Biden shows Democrats winning by a margin of plus 10, with most others being below that. And in New Mexico, it got much closer this cycle than many expected with Trump almost leading at one point against Biden. Most polls with Harris, however, showed Trump behind by margins of about seven points, which is also what the latest poll shows. Because of this, we can make both of them likely to vote for Harris. Nebraska's second district, which is the only one that Trump isn't favored to win by a safe margin like the rest of the state, is actually going to be a likely blue vote. Polls here started out giving Trump a slight edge, but Democrats have led or tied in every poll since then. The most recent poll shows Harris winning by a margin of plus eight, which is enough to make it likely blue. We can also make Minnesota a likely blue state. This could be surprising to some if you've been keeping up with the trends this cycle, just because between Trump and Biden, Trump had a really good shot at flipping it. Even though it has voted for Democrats longer than any other state, the most recent polling average from 538 shows Harris and Waltz have brought Minnesota back into the fold where they lead by a margin of plus 7.6. Personally, I think it'll end up being a lean state, but based on this margin, we can make it likely Democratic. Finishing off Harris's likely states is Maine's statewide contest. In the last election, Maine as a whole voted for Biden by a margin of plus 9.1, which is much lower than many were expecting, especially because its first district went to the Democrats by a huge margin of plus 23.1. The most recent poll shows Harris ahead by what is usually considered safe with plus 17. But when you take into account its previous polling errors and Trump's overall popularity this cycle, I'm predicting it'll be a likely Democrat state. Adding these all together leaves Trump in the lead, but it's still anyone's game since the only states we have left to fill out are some of the most highly contested battleground states. Starting us off is the usual blue state of Oregon. In the past few elections, Oregon has voted for Democrats by margins of at least double-digit margins. But the most recent polls show that Trump could potentially be on track to flip it. The most recent poll from Hoffman Research Group shows Harris barely pulling ahead of Trump by a margin of plus five. With enough campaigning, Trump could win Oregon, but for now, we can make Oregon a lean Harris state. Next up are a pair of two highly contested states this election, Nevada and its neighbor Arizona. In Nevada, Harris just managed to take the lead from Trump, where she's now ahead by a margin of plus 0.7. Trump has done much better here this cycle since it was one of the only battlegrounds from 2016 to 2020 not to vote for Trump either time. And as for Arizona, it's even closer. The most recent average shows Harris holding a super slim margin of plus 0.3. In 2020, Arizona had the second closest margin of the entire election since Biden ended up winning it, despite it being a longtime red state. Even though Harris leads in both of these averages, based on overall trends this cycle, as well as past polling errors, I think they'll ultimately go to Trump, so I'm going to make them both tilt Republican. Moving on to the state of Georgia. Being one of the closest states in the last election, current polling shows this could continue. The most recent polling average shows Harris barely holding the lead with plus 0.5, which would usually make this a toss-up since it could go to either candidate. But just like with Nevada and Arizona, overall trends this cycle have heavily pointed to Trump gaining a lot of support nationally, which I think isn't correctly being accounted for. Because of this, I'm also going to tilt it to Trump. North Carolina is another battleground state this election, despite it consistently voting for Trump. As of the most recent polling average, Trump is favored to win with a margin of plus 0.4, the closest we've seen so far. Again, anything less than 1% is typically going to be a toss-up, but because of historical polling errors and current trends, I'm going to make it a lean Trump state. Just north is the state of Virginia, a more unexpectedly close state this election given its Democratic history. Polls here have been pretty split with Trump leading in some and Harris leading in others. The most recent poll between the two shows Harris winning Virginia by a margin of plus three. Because of this, we can lean it in her favor. Finishing up the Northeast are the states of New Hampshire and New Jersey. Usually, like most of the states in this region, 
they are some shade of blue. But Trump seems to have been putting that to the test, specifically in New Jersey, since New Hampshire has already been close in the past. Looking first at the state of New Jersey, the most recent poll shows Trump ahead by a margin of plus one. To be fair, this poll is from a few months ago now before Biden dropped out. So I don't think it realistically will go to Trump, but I do think it'll be close. So for now, we can tilt it to the Democrats. And in New Hampshire, the latest polling average shows Harris winning by a likely margin of plus 7.2. But when you again look at the historical errors and overall trends nationally, I think it'll just be a lean Democrat state. And finally, finishing our map are the three most important and most contested states in the entire election, Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. Make up a combined 46 votes. And for our map today, Harris needs all three to win versus Trump, who only needs one. Starting us off is the state of Wisconsin. Looking at the graph, Harris has seemingly been slowly and steadily growing her lead against Trump, but polls here have been super wrong in the past. The most recent polling average puts Harris ahead of Trump by a margin of plus 3.2. This state has a history of being this close in Trump elections with Trump winning it by less than 1% in 2016 and Biden flipping it with less than 1% in 2020. Michigan is up next. In 2016, this was just as close as Wisconsin with Trump winning it by less than 1%, but this changed in 2020 when Biden flipped it by a margin of plus 2.8. As of today, Harris leads Trump by an even closer margin than what we just saw in Wisconsin with plus 2.4. Finishing off the Rust Belt is the keystone state of Pennsylvania. Being the most important state in this region with 19 total electoral votes, it is also one of the closest Currently, Harris holds the lead with plus 1.2, but it seems to be getting closer. All three of these states have been pretty wrong in the past, all consistently underestimating Trump in polls. Even though Harris seems to be in the lead in all three, I predict that all 46 votes will go to Trump in tilt margins. With that, Trump wins the election. But what do you think will happen in November? Is Harris on track to win? Or will Trump win in an even bigger landslide? Let us know in the comments.